joining us this morning on the show. And in response to um, some uh, startling news this week uh, that New Zealand's roading network is seriously under construction and if you get in your car right now and you're driving along our state highways, there is no guarantee that you'll be meeting quality roads. Um, and also there are serious complaints from people, including the mayor of um, New Plymouth this weekend, that hundreds of millions of dollars have been siphoned out of the region and provincial areas of New Zealand to support uh, roading projects in metropolitan New Zealand, leading to an appalling state of our roads, um, both state highways in particular, uh, servicing those rural and provincial areas. Joining us to discuss that this morning is the AA's road safety spokesperson, Dylan Thompson. Dylan, good morning. Welcome to the show. Morning, Michael. Um, is that your understanding as a uh, from the Automobile Association's point of view, that there has been a significant underinvestment in our roading network? Short answer, yes. Um, we, for for a decade or more as well, this is, this is a long-term thing, it's not um, like it's just happens, uh, we have been under-investing in the maintenance and upkeep of our roads and, um, and we have been falling short of of the targets for um, see how much how much work um, is aimed to be done for um, for each year um, in terms of repairing road surfaces and um, and doing some of the more sort of significant foundational work that um, that has to be done um, because you know roads they they are consumable for want of a better term you know they they get built and made and then as they get used. They do wear down and they suffer damage. So, um, so you're constantly having to to repair and and replace. Um, but we we haven't been putting in the investment for um, for quite some time. Well, and we've certainly been taking uh, money through the excise tax, and uh, which I always understood was meant to be used for roads and and also AA related issues too. Um, sorry, um, ACC related issues. Where's that money been going? If it hasn't been going into roads. Um, oh well. It, it is going into roads, but it's also going into a number of other areas. So, um, so essentially, your fuel tax and road user charges and um, and money from rates as well go all into the uh, National Land Transport Fund, and that gets used for funding road maintenance and also building new roads or safety improvements to roads. It also gets used for public transport, it gets used for funding road policing, it gets used for funding walking and, um, and cycling projects. Um, it now um, also provides some funding towards rail. So, um, so it's always a, a bucket of funding that has um, a huge amount of, of different calls People, um, you know, looking for money across a huge range of different transport-related work, and um, and from the AA's perspective, you know, we think that the maintenance of the road network that we currently have has to be one of the top priorities for uh, for that funding, and that's why back in 2020, ahead of the election, then um, we always create what we call our election calls um, with the political parties going to all of them ahead of the election. What we think. Uh, the top things the next government needs to do and um, and investing more in road maintenance was our number one call back in 2020. Um, we, Our calculations, we thought that we needed to be spending $300 million more per year on road maintenance to catch up on some of the work that, um, that hadn't been done. And, um, and to this government's credit, they, they did increase the amount of funding available by $500 million. Um, but uh, this is an area where I say if you're not going forwards, you're going backwards. So we think that we still don't have enough funding going available for road maintenance work, and um, and that's why all around the country now you're um, you're seeing a lot of people complaining and saying that they um, they feel that the roads have never been in worse shape. Mm. Um, so what's the problem? Is it that the is it the priority is is wrong of of road transport, or is is it that it's been fritted on the other things that you mentioned that it funds? Uh, well, I th I think the the issue really is that um, we've got a limited amount of funding, and um, and then 
calls have to be made about what that is going to be invested in. And, um, and you know, don't get me wrong, there, there's no doubt that New Zealand can um, can invest more in public transport and, and cycling and, and walking and, and a lot of those active modes that, um, that these are good things for the country to be investing in and can deliver benefits. But at the same time, we also have to make sure that our road network is not falling um, falling apart and, and breaking up because the key thing here as well is if you don't do the work now or you don't fix things when they're smaller problems, they just grow into bigger problems and um, yeah. and you end up yeah. with a snowballing effect where the, where the costs down the track are going to be greater. So, um, well, the irony it, is that the it, government's now um, pulling in spending. It decided it needed to stimulate the economy uh, in response to COVID, uh, like many other Western country governments. Uh, they now realise that they've fueled inflation and that they need to increase um, interest rates and also rein in their own spending. Does that mean that there's not much hope for the future either? In terms of creating um, roading networks that are up to up to spec. Well, I, I guess I'm I'm a natural optimist, <laughs> so I, 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 I always I always like to think that um, thing, things are going to be able to um, improve and get better. Um, I guess all I can kind of say and answer that is I think, or the AA's view is that we're at a bit of a tipping point currently, where if we don't step up the um, the investment of road maintenance um, r- like right now and starts to really um, get back, catch up on the work that's needed to be done and be investing more in that area, that we are going to see the problems only get worse in the years ahead. Well, um, we don't want to see that. Um, we we have pushed all, all, ever since 2020. Um, we have taken every opportunity to um, to always be calling for more investment in road maintenance and, um, and saying to officials and ministers that, um, that we see this as the most important issue and um, we keep beating that drum. We, um, we're going to continue to do so. And the next sort of opportunity really for a significant change is when um, the GPS will be developed for 2024, which sets how much funding is available for different what they call asset classes of the transport system um, for the next three years. So, um, so work um, developing that will already be underway. Um, I'm um, also but, thinking of um, Transmission Gully because Transmission Gully was this probably the project of the last decade, huge project yep. um, a, 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 of an individual nature, um, and it has been plagued by not only incredible delays but also it would seem incredible incompetence and negligence uh, in terms of it not being fit for purpose and having to be relayed and, and things like that. The cost budget has, got, has escalated um, astronomically as well. Um, what went wrong there, do you think? Was it because there was a partnership between public and private or is it just there are a whole series of incompetent people running around? I, d- I don't think that um, just saying that you know, the fact that it was a, a public-private partnership um, was, was the reason for the issues that um, that took place there. I, I, I wouldn't agree with that. I think that um, you know those sorts of arrangements can can work really well um, and can deliver good results. And I mean, Transmission Gully was such such a shame. And yeah, in I know, so I many know. Ways, isn't it? Yeah, because. It, it has delivered a, a road in the end that, um, and, I, and I live down in the lower North Island, so yeah. I use it regularly, yeah. and all the people I know since it's opened, um, they love it. They think it's great. Yeah, and, you know, it's made their life a lot um, a lot easier and, and better. And, um, and so in terms of what ended up being delivered in terms of the road, I, I think it, um, it was a, a great result that has benefited the Wellington region and the Lower North Island a lot. Mm. Unfortunately, um, it managed to get tarnished by the, all the delays and, um, and, and a whole bunch of the, the financial issues that, uh, that went on. Um, I, you know, who knows 
what was in the uh, the contract that uh, was originally put together and, and the legal negotiations and wrangling that um, that would have taken place towards the uh, the end of that project. But I think what's still clear is that things like that and, and projects like that are still needed in New Zealand and they can deliver um, you know much better transport infrastructure. So we we have to try and figure out how we can how we can do these things cheaper and faster and better and not have those kind of those kind of delays or cost blowouts happen. And um, and we're we're not there yet. No, we um, are not. That's for sure. No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Dylan. I appreciate your time. Um, that was Dylan Thompson from uh, the AA Road uh, talking about a uh, billion dollars just to bring our roading network up to scratch. So if you're wondering, looking at all the roadworks at the moment, and boy, the, wherever you go, there seem to be roadworks, don't they? Um, but also just that um, many of the region or, and provincial areas of New Zealand's just simply not getting any work at all because, well, the funding's not there. They're not the priority. Boy, isn't that a lament.